So as we were saying, tonight's matchup pits the Lions of LMU against the 16th ranked Hokies of Virginia Tech. The Lions, as always, are led by Paul Crumpy, entering his 22nd season at the helm for LMU. On the flip side, Virginia Tech enters the season with high expectations under the tutelage of Mike Brizendine. Jonathan, tough game for the Lions here. Opening day for both of these sides. What do the Lions need to do if they want to really compete against a great team like Virginia Tech? Well, you know, it's 2019, Rayhan. It's a clean slate for the Lions. They had a bit of a rough go of it last year. Six and 12 in the regular season, just three and four in the West Coast Conference. So, you know, today is a chance to start things off on the right foot against a highly competitive Virginia Tech team. Uh, LMU did just come out of a successful exhibition match, which they took down UCSB with a score of four to three. As the sun sets here over Sullivan Field, we look ready to get things rolling. The Lions with new logos, new jerseys. I think it's going to be a good season, Rayhan. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how the Lions do. Home opener here, good crowd on hand for LMU. Looks like a lot of the other sports teams are here to support men's soccer. That's always a great sight to see. LMU, as you mentioned, in their new jerseys, light blue jerseys with the crimson numbers and white shorts. Virginia Tech, as always, in the iconic maroon jerseys with their orange numbers. We'll see which team really pulls out ahead here as both teams are huddling for a momentary pause before we get kickoff going. Heading into this game, Jonathan, is there any player you think on either team that really stands out? Well, you know, I think lying on your experienced players, Avoci, Cortez in goal, you know, players like that who have seen time and, you know, they've had a chance to grow and develop alongside each other. That's going to be the key. There's a lot of youngsters on this team, uh, many of whom may be playing this evening. So I think not only is that a good opportunity for Paul Crumpy to get them some time on the field and get them some reps, but it's also a good chance to, you know, kind of give them a little bit of a baptism by fire here in, uh, again, you know, against a really highly competitive Virginia Tech team. Yeah, I would definitely agree with you there. And on the flip side for Virginia Tech, the man to watch is number 15, Christo Strickler. The junior enters off a very strong season in which he started all 21 games. He finished with 24 total points by way of 10 goals and 4 assists. He is in the starting lineup today, so we'll see how LMU contains him. And going off that, Jonathan, what's the starting lineup looking like for LMU? Well, as we mentioned, Alfredo Cortez wearing number one on the jersey. He will be in goalie, standing six foot four, a commanding presence uh, in the white frame today. Bastian Oberly wearing number 22 is at the midfield, joined by Brandon Sanchez and Rodrigo San Roman also at the mid. The first forward of the day is number nine, Francis Ovochi. We talked about him earlier. Nick Dosho wearing number four. He'll be one of the defenders today. Another experienced player to keep an eye out for. Alongside him, Gerardo Lopez, someone who's been a bit of an underdog at times and can be a true powerhouse when he gets into a rhythm. Also at the midfield, Alex Liu. He is joined by Noel Kalixson, number 29, and Narcisco Cervantes in the midfield. The last defender, last but not least, Christian Wood wearing number 23. Yeah, both teams set to kick off here. And real quick, the lineup for Virginia Tech in goal will be number one, Matthias Swineveld. He'll be protected by a back four of Will Mejia, Mark Hoppler, Jacob Bloomler, and John Ingleson. Defense will look to link up with the midfield of Brendan Moyers, Christo Strickler, who we mentioned a key player to watch out for, Daniel Pereira and Nick Blaylock. And in attack for the Hokies will be the pairing of James Kashik and Nico Kwashi. Now it'll be Virginia Tech pushing forward here as that'll take a deflection out of bounds, throw in back to the Hokies. You know, Rayhan, they're going to run out of seats here at Sullivan Field. It is a packed house for the official season opener here for the Lions. Yeah, great atmosphere, especially on opening day. You talked about LMU, a tough matchup here, but it has to help a lot to see the school showing out and supporting them. This ball moved around the back. Center back, Engelson, picks out a long ball down the middle, but handled well by the show. That one falls in a dangerous area. However, Virginia Tech now pressing down across the face of goal. It skims away, but still in danger. Another shot, and it's an early goal for Virginia Tech. That cross looked like it missed the mark, but waiting on the backside for Virginia Tech was Jacob Bloomler, and he kicks things off for the Hokies. One to nothing, just 55 seconds into this contest. You know, call it an announcer's jinx. We said it was a clean slate for the Lions, a chance to get off on the right foot, and Boy, Rahon, that's not how you want to start a game. But the good news is there's just 55 seconds in. There's a lot of soccer let yet to be played. Yeah, it was a dangerous link-up play there, getting the ball into the striker, Kwashi, there. And he did a great job laying it off for a low cross. That one fizzed across at the face of the goalkeeper, Cortez. The Lions thought they escaped the danger. But once again, it was number 31, Jacob Bloomler, waiting on the weak side for a nice little tap-in goal. 
That is not the way LMU wanted to start things off, but plenty of game left to be played as the long ball is played in towards the target man striker, Vochi. Tries to knock this one down for the Lions now. Looking to control possession, just not on the same page there for LMU as Oberly. Plays that back to the goalkeeper, Swanfeld. Swanfeld will take it from here, but, you know, I think, like we said earlier, this is a highly competitive, very good, and very well-rounded Virginia Tech team. These Hockeys are no joke. They started their preseason play, or I guess you could call it pre-regular season play, with three exhibition matches. They went two for one in that regard. Uh, two consecutive wins against West Virginia and Old Dominion. 2-1 to one and 2-zip to zip respectively before falling to Georgetown, a very good program, 3-0. to nil. So they are coming off the back foot and with a little bit of a chip on their shoulder, and that's dangerous when you have a team as good as Virginia Tech. Yeah, this Virginia Tech team, very experienced one, making it tough for the Lions. The Hokies return 10 players who started at least 10 matches last season, so very good chemistry as they're charging forward here, and a foul will be called against Virginia Tech. Bit too much aggression there from Pereira. Lions fans approving of the call, and the Lions play this one quick down the right-hand side. Lots of power on it, and it will be a bit too much out for a goal kick. Well, on that last foul, Noel Callixon took a bit of a tumble. He's he's been thrown around a little bit. It's only been two minutes and 17 seconds and counting, but you know he's taken a handful of, of dives onto the turf. And it's a long road trip here for Virginia Tech, who I believe will be in the area for their next game against Santa Barbara, but. Definite confidence booster here coming across the country, getting an early goal against LMU. A long ball will be played in towards the captain, Strickler. Nice clearance there coming towards us. And well, back I hope you brought your baseball, baseball mitt today. Crowd loving the interaction there. Big group of fans on hand, the drums going for the Lions in the student section. But Ray, on the way they kicked that, you think they want us to join? Yeah, maybe. We'll see. Lots of lots of people on hand, as you mentioned. A great environment for LMU. Hopefully the players can get something going. I'm sure if LMU could snag an early goal here, the crowd would really get into this one. A bit of physicality down the sideline. I'll send it back to the Lions. Looks like Virginia Tech making a big effort to get Quashi involved, holding the ball up in the middle of the field. Nice physicality, though, by LMU to push him around. Looking like it's going to be a pretty chippy game here. Both these teams really want to win. Obviously, Virginia Tech wanting to come back on a win on a high note after the loss against Georgetown, and LMU just wanting to prove that they have what it takes. Ball bounces around the midfield, takes a deflection off a lion. I believe it was Rodrigo San Ramon who tips that one out of bounds. Once again, resetting by way of Ingleson. Nice pressure here by LMU, but It'll force a low clearance. A bit too much pace on it for the left back there. Nice pressure from LMU. Will force it just out of bounds. Throwing back to the Hokies. Physicality definitely a key factor in this one. Definitely the defining trait of these first five minutes. Another deflection out of bounds back to Virginia Tech. LMU crowd getting a let's go Lions chant going, trying to urge their team to match some of the aggressiveness we've seen from Virginia Tech. Well, you see how quickly Christian Wood closed in there. He was ready for it. He rewarded with a throw in. And it's great IQ there by Wood to not touch the ball and simply box out the attacking player of Virginia Tech. Once again, another throw in to Wood. Wood calling for some support. Looking around. Nice little movement there in the midfield. Frees up a Lion player. Now working at opposite side are the Lions. Coming down the sideline is LMU. Nice move there. Breaks free. Brought down in the box. No foul called. It'll go out of bounds for a throw in, but Jonathan, from where we're sitting, that looked like it could have easily been a penalty. Boy, the Lions faithful are not happy about that last one, Rayhan. He took a dive into the turf and... Boy, from this angle, it sure looked like there was a penalty, but of course the referees have a much better view than we do. Now shot from distance there, takes a deflection off of Voce, who wasn't looking, trying to make a run in behind, but possession stays with LMU by way of Wood. Wood but now playing it out wide. It was a good shot, but a little bit of friendly fire getting in the way there. Now into Strickler. Strickler playing a great ball in behind Nikwashi. Goalkeeper caught off his line, tracking back. Kwashi into the box, takes a shot, saved. 
Well done there by the goalkeeper, Cortez, tracking back as he was caught a bit off his line. Good discipline to sit down there and not let the ball go through his legs. It was Nico Kwashi hitched there. He hustled to it. He made sure he got himself in position in time. He had the opportunity to score. I think he was waiting a little bit for that low angle shot like they got last time, but this time it doesn't work. Close but no cigar. Yeah, that would have been a tough one to allow there for LMU going down 2 nothing just six minutes in, but a good save by Cortez keeps the Lions in this one. Danger is not averted, however, as very solid Virginia Tech team now has a corner kick. This will be their first corner of the game. Cortez did a good job of being all over that one. As you said, Rayhan, he tracked it from start to finish. He took away the angle right away, and there he does it again, this time with the hands. A nice punch there by Cortez. This ball's fizzed low into the box, bouncing around for Virginia Tech. It'll eventually be cleared by Alex Liu. Foul falls now rather to Oberly, but he's swarmed immediately by Kasich, and Virginia Tech will take it right back. The Hokies now very patient on the ball. Early lead, no need to rush anything here. You can hear the drums in the background. It's the LAFC fan club here on LMU's beautiful campus. They've come out to support the Lions in their official home opener. Official season opener. This ball now moving around. Back into Lou, just a bit too close to the sideline there. Virginia Tech will take it again. The Lions really having a bit of trouble controlling the ball. It appears that any time Virginia Tech gives it away, they immediately go into a press, making things very difficult for LMU. Hokies now with another throw in. On the opposite side of the field, there is space for Virginia Tech. They are working it around that way. Fouls now for Bloomer, the goal scorer. He's brought down. No foul called. Lions will take it back. Boy, Bloomy, are you really, really hustling there and getting some contact on multiple occasions? He knocked into a Lions defender and fell to the ground. And tell how bad both of these teams want it. Now Kwashi again on the ball. Really been controlling the play going forward, but a bit too much on that one. Sends it out of bounds. And we're kind of seeing it similar both the ways when it comes to Virginia Tech, trying to get Nico Kwashi on the ball, holding it up in an attacking position. And for the Lions, I'd assume a similar strategy surrounding a bigger striker in Francis Voce, but the Lions midfield really trying to get control of the game early on. I mean, the Lions are in a tough position. Down one zip. Just under nine minutes in the game as players on both sides hit the turf. I think the Lions are going to have to do a little bit better job of maintaining possession. As I say that, they give it away. Blumier, once again, but possession gives you an opportunity to shoot, and the more you shoot, the higher chance you have of scoring. It sounds obvious, but it's difficult to do when you're out there. Right now, Virginia Tech is controlling the pace of play. Another long ball played down the left-hand side for the Hokies. Knocked down well. Another driving run down the left-hand side. Low cross in once again. Good clearance by the Lions, but Virginia Tech keeps it in a dangerous area. Another cross set to come in here, and it does just over the head of Strickler. This one will fall to Bloomer, knocks it back to Hoppler, and Virginia Tech will once again reset and comfortably sit on the ball. I think the Lions got a bit of a lucky break there. They had Kwashi wide open with no one on him in free real estate. I mean, he was a squatter right there in the middle of the field, and no one saw him, including his own team, I think, for for you know good fortune of the Lions, but that was a dangerous one. Could have easily been 2-zip. Yeah, not the start LMU was looking for. Just 10 minutes into this one. Had a long ball towards Lou. This one will bounce around, go out of bounds, and stay with the Lions in an attacking position. Looks like Oberly was going to take the throw, but he'll drop it back for another teammate. Lions just catching a breather here. Relentless pressure from Virginia Tech to start this one off. It'll fall for Lou. Wood calling for it to reset back in the middle of the field. Lions will send a cross in towards the Voce here. Not enough on it. Once again, falls to lose, been active early. He'll reset. On that last one, I don't know that LMU was really in the attacking mood yet. They didn't have the numbers. Oh, it's a tough break there for LMU. 
And the Lions getting right back into this one. Quick free kick played here. Bloomler now racing down the right-hand side for the Hokies as they continue to push the pace on LMU. Good job holding it up by Bloomler. This one will fall for Hoppler. Back into the middle of the field for Pereira. Great job there stepping up by Deshaux as he lays it off for Sanchez. And the Lions just trying to get a feel for the ball right now. Bloomer's doing a really good job of pulling multiple defenders, and that means if you have two or more people on you that somebody or multiple players even are open, he's doing a good job of forcing the defense to pull to his side of the field and opening up that backside. Yeah, we've seen Virginia Tech really having their way with the Lions defense, as you mentioned, when it comes to pulling players out of position. Once again, Bloomler standing in plenty of space here on the right-hand side. We'll see if they can get it around to him. Now looks like they might. Midfielder opting to hold on to it is Moyers. Now it does make its way to Bloomler. Bloomler matched up with Wood there on the right-hand side for Virginia Tech. This one back into Moyers, now to Strickler. Strickler cutting inside towards the top of the box, lays it off. Pereira. Nice little softball into the edge of the box. Cross coming in towards Kawashi here. Swing and a miss, but still danger for LMU as it takes the deflection. The Lions once again, Jonathan, looking like they're avoiding another goal. Kawashi stood right over that one, just swung and missed. Well, the Lions defense is going to be tired here if this keeps up, but I have to say Cortez is doing one heck of a job there in goal. The Lions may have an opportunity now from the side. One in towards the box, flying it is a Voce, just unable to get onto that one. Virginia Tech racing the counterattack, constantly pushing the pace in this one. It's a nice switch of a ball played there by LMU to San Ramon. That's been something they've seen towards Lou early, and now San Ramon getting a chance. Bloomer racing to keep this one in bounds. You know what, Paul Crumpy can't be mad about that last one. LMU was in good position. They set themselves up nicely. Avoche was in the right spot at the right time. I think it was just a little bit of, I mean, he was maybe an inch or so off. That could have been a very sticky situation for Virginia Tech. Yeah, it was good build-up play there by the Lions. We've seen Virginia Tech create lots of chances for Quashi. Lions' first real opportunity for Avoche to get on the end of that one. Does a good effort, but just a bit too soft for him to get his head to it. Now, once again, the goalkeeper, Cortez, will reset for the Lions as they spread out. Back to Cortez. Still plenty of time. LMU, despite being down one to nothing, no need to force anything this early. Let's look to play this one into a Voce. Great job knocking it down there by the big man. Now into a Voce again, trying to control it. Bloomler all over the field here for Virginia Tech. And it'll fall for Wood. Nice little cut inside there by Wood. Lays it off for Sanchez. Sanchez back in behind for Wood. Great clearance there. And it'll go for a Lions throw in, in the attacking third now. LMU trying to get a feel for the ball. It was a great play there by Wood. Really fancy footwork. Did a good job of getting him spa self space. I think he just kind of ran out of real estate as he veered off towards this near side. It would be the bottom left of your screen. The idea was there. The execution was just that much off. But the Lions are starting to shape up a little bit. We're just under 15 minutes here in the first half of play. And the Lions are trying to make their way down into Virginia Tech territory. Start putting the pressure on the Hockeys. That's a nice idea there by... The Lions just not on the same page. Good pick up there now. Oberly wins it back for LMU. Plays it out to Lou. Lou, nice cut inside, charging forward towards the edge of the box here. Lays it off for Avoche. Dangerous area for LMU. Floats it into the box just over the head of San Ramon. But that is the best opportunity the Lions have created so far. And that will bring the crowd a bit more into the game. Boy, a little miscommunication that could have been very dangerous for Virginia Tech. The Hockeys definitely caught sleeping on that one. San Ramon was in the right place at the right time. He was just a little bit too much forward. Lions battling now. A bit more confidence on the ball from LMU after creating that chance. Lopez now in traffic. Off to lay it off to the goalkeeper, Cortez, who will clear. This one heading towards San Ramon. Still bouncing around the midfield. A layoff for Sanchez, who finds a man in some space. LMU now coming forward. 
Dangerous ball played in behind for Lou. Plenty of pace there, just unable to reach it. He'll force a clearance. Another clearance there by Virginia Tech to show all over it for LMU. Nice move there by Sanchez. Wins a free kick for the Lions. Dangerous area. Just 15 minutes into this game, Jonathan, anyone stand out from you on the LMU side? Well, Christian Wood, I think, is doing a really nice job. Alex Liu on the defensive. Uh, fantastic. He's so fast. Although he's playing that midfield, he has been a little bit more effective defensively this game. Uh, you know, I think San Roman, he had a really good look. He was just a little bit of miscommunication. But uh, if I had to give it to anyone right now, uh, Christian Wood, he's really standing out to me right now. He's done a great job going both ways for LMU. Now a dangerous opportunity here for the Lions. Good set piece chance here. It'll be the right footed player. Whipping this one in. Looks like they'll be targeting the back post. The Lions fans really getting into it for this chance. Really only one player back for LMU. Committing lots of bodies forward here. Signal goes. This one is lifted towards the back post and headed up but not away. It'll be a corner kick for LMU. Their first of the game. I tell you what, though, Oberly placed that ball perfectly. It shot a little bit to the outside. He put some spin on it. It came right back in towards that back third of the goal. It was a beautifully placed ball. I think LMU was just held up a little bit by the Virginia Tech defense. Yeah, now the Lions putting some pressure on Virginia Tech. Standing over the corner kick, coming short is Lou. They'll lay it off to the top of the box. Rather, now it'll be flicked in towards the goalie. No trouble there as it comes right at Swanveld, but the Lions putting some pressure on now, really flipping the momentum of this one. First 10 minutes looked like it was all Hokies, but now LMU knocking on the door. Boy, Swanfeld really heads up play there, able to make the save. He hasn't seen a whole bunch of threats. That's more gone to Cortez for the Lions, but LMU looking to change that. This one bouncing around. San Ramon gets on the end of it for the Lions, pushing it now overly. Overly looking in behind, fires a shot just wide. And oh. there we have it once again. Bastion Overly for the Lions, forcing the issue, pushing forward. Gets a good shot towards goal just on the outside of the post. Overly can't, can't fault him at all. I think Paul Crumpy again is going to be very happy with that one. He had a look from the outside. He had space. He had time and room. The accuracy was there. He was just maybe a foot or so off. Yeah, big time signs of life here for LMU. This one will fall for Bloomer. Nice sliding challenge in there for Wood, allowing the defense to reset. The crowd not agreeing with the call there. You know, credit where credit's due. Bloomer is so good with his feet. He is so poised and so quick. It's really, it's impressive to watch. He's giving the Lions defense a whole heck of a challenge. He's so poised out there and confident. A very physical player. He's fun to watch. Oh, what a great footwork there from LMU. That was Sanchez doing the most. Once again, Overly with the press. He'll take a deflection out to Virginia Tech, but they're most definitely feeling the pressure of the Lions in these last 10 minutes. Trying to get service into Strickler, but all over him is Lopez for LMU. I tell you what, Rayhan, the Lions are a whole different ball club right now. They're playing with a ferocity that we have not seen this game. It's only been less than 20 minutes, but they are trying to turn things around. And look at Lou go. Plenty of pace once again for Lou, pressing forward for LMU, turning inside, looking to reverse it. Now Sanchez. Sanchez, plenty of options. We'll play it back out wide. Back to the show. Boy, Lou, that with the PlayStation moves out there. Yeah, Lou has been a handful for Virginia Tech in these first 20 minutes. His pace, his agility, just too much for them to handle. We'll see if they can keep playing him in behind that back line going forward. And we said that Bloomer's gonna be a good challenge and has been so far for the Lions defense. Look out Virginia Tech for Alex Liu. And I think the big thing with Bloomer, as you touched upon earlier was the play of Wood really stepping up and holding him under control over these last 10 minutes versus the first 10. If Wood can keep it up, the Lions should have a good chance of really limiting opportunities for Virginia Tech. Now Desho will 
Just shepherd this one out of bounds for a goal kick, and we'll have our first substitution of the game. So San Roman will take a break. We get CJ Neville with some fresh legs in. We have a new burst of energy and burst of life here for the Lions as we're 21 minutes and just about 10 seconds in. We have plenty of cheers for the Lions fans for that substitution. Neville now coming in, looks like he'll slot in towards the left-hand side, just off the shoulder of Ovoche. Rayhan, what do you think has changed for the Lions? I said they've, they've looked like they're playing a little bit more cohesively. What do you think specifically has changed from earlier in this game? I think the key for LMU is they've done a way better ball of ch or way better job rather of checking back to the ball, giving quick options for their players. Really what messed them up in the first 10 minutes was Virginia Tech immediately pressing after they lost the ball. Now, right when LMU wins the ball back, you see multiple players checking back to it, making it easy for the player who won it to just get rid of it, and then eventually LMU can settle in on the ball. You know, despite the score, which is Virginia Tech 1, LMU 0, LMU has Virginia Tech doubled up in terms of shots on goal. The Lions with four, the Hockeys with two. Now back to Deshaux. He has wood for the switch, opts to go even longer towards the substitute Neville. Nice touch there to knock it down. And just unfortunate there as he slips. It'll go back to Virginia Tech. Lopez stepping up and shoulder into the back of Strickler will send it back towards Virginia Tech. Boche will roll it back. Hoppler now plays it quick. LMU forwards pressing a lot more than they did at the start of the game. Another adjustment there. Goalkeeper forced into another long clearance. Looks like the show will be right on that one. It's a great job there by the Lions. Cow scan there. Once again, Lou finds himself on the ball. Wood standing in plenty of space on the opposite side. They opt to go into a voce. Little tricky one there for Lopez, but heads it down nicely. Now a chance here if it was just a bit more on it. Avoce making a nice run. The show picks him out, but just couldn't get quite enough on the ball. You know, the Virginia Tech is having an awfully hard time getting it to LMU's half of the field. There's a foul call on the Lions, and they're not too pleased about it. Yeah, definite swing in momentum here, and I think we've seen Francis Avoce making a lot of dangerous runs here for the Lions, particularly in these last five minutes. We'll see if they're able to pick him out and time it. He has a couple chances to get in behind right there to show we saw, trying to play it over the top. If he keeps making runs like that, we'll likely see a couple scoring opportunities in this game. Now back to the goalkeeper. Long ball towards Strickler. Lopez oh. getting up, no foul called. Lopez going for the piggyback ride there. Back to Sanchez, now Wood. Lions controlling the ball in the midfield. Great job there, good patience. And a bit too much there from Francis Avoce. He'll send it back, but we're seeing LMU players swarming Virginia Tech as a player is down for the Hokies right now. Play will the continue. Cassock. Brendan Moyer Brendan getting up Moyer's gingerly here. Does seem to be a little bit on the back foot there. He's favoring one leg for sure, but he's trying to muscle through it. Hats off to him. That looked to be a hard kick right to the shin or the knee. Nice tackle there by Lopez. That's a great stop by Gerardo Lopez. Graduate of Loyola High School, now attending Loyola Marymount University. He's been one of the Lions' key defenders here for the last two seasons. Yeah, him and Deshaux back there have made quite the center back pairing for LMU. As a team, especially going into a season, it's nice to have those people you can count on really anchoring the defense. Now Kwashi getting his first touch in quite a while. Trying to work back, but great job there by Neville. Now Oberly trying to flip the play, not on the same page there with Lou. And 
CJ me. Neville looking a little bit tired already. I know he just subbed in a couple minutes ago, but he's he's slipped a handful of times now, I think two. He's looking a little bit slow out there. But we know he's capable. We've seen him play before, and he's a heck of a player. So we'll see how he does as he starts to warm up the muscles. Now Virginia Tech coming the other way. Another ball played down that left-hand side. Cross coming in. This one floated towards the near post, headed away by Deshaux. It'll be a corner kick for the Hokies. It is their second corner kick of the game. Really, that left-hand side has been where the danger has come for Virginia Tech, breaking down the Lions' defense, getting the ball back over to the right-hand side on a cross. That's how they got their first goal a minute in. Once again, they'll have a corner kick from there now. So dangerous territory for LMU. But their defenses seem to be up to the challenge so far. Don't want to say anything <laughs> that could jinx it. And that one bounces around and takes the deflection just wide of the net. Danger averted there for the Lions. Now looking to go the other way. This one played to Wood. Has Neville in front of him. Ops for Oberly inside. The Lions defense getting it away with another one there with some smart and tricky play. And a little oh, bit of luck. Reset here. A bit of danger now for the goalkeeper Cortez as he finds himself between the striker pairing of Quashi and Strickler. Great pass there in for Avoche. Just unable to knock it down. CJ Neville just pinballing it around and keeping it in the paws of the Lions, who now have an opportunity. Now it's Lou stepping over, crossing shot off the goalkeeper's hands and handled well there by Swanveld, but a great switch of the play there by the Lions. A couple nice step overs from Lou creates a chance, but it's dealt with easily by the goalkeeper. I tell you what, Rayhan Swanfeld saw that one all the way in. It was a really good look for LMU, but couldn't quite outsmart Swanfeld, who positioned himself just so. I don't know that there was ever a chance of that ball going in. I think for the Lions going forward, it's going to be important if they can get Francis Avoce really involved in those last couple of key passes. We've seen them get forward, but it's always been on the counterattack through the pace of someone like Lou. Really trying to work back and get Avoce more involved. Definitely a dangerous finisher for the Lions. Could be what puts them over the top. As we said earlier in the broadcast, the stands continuing to fill up. It's a packed house tonight here at Sullivan Field. I like what I'm seeing, Rayon. Yeah, the players definitely feeling the energy here. Lots of support. All types of students here coming out for LMU. We see plenty of other sports teams here showing support in addition to some faculty, parents, and students. Great crowd on hand today. Great day here as the sun is just setting over Sullivan Field. Couple more substitutions coming in. This one will bounce around. You got Christian Wood wide open on the backside. He's calling for it. He's got some room to run with. Of course, he's way far away from the action, but now gets towards it. Nice job by Desho once again. He's been busy picking out those long passes. Those shows so effective at using his height to his advantage. As we can see on that last play, now the Lions in trouble. Virginia Tech coming once again down that left-hand side. Cross played in towards the back post. Bloomler is there, fires a shot blocked by the Lion defender. It'll fall for Neville, as I believe it's Wood looking to send things the other way. The Lions now just playing keep away. And a player taken down there. C.J. Neville once again just falling down. Give the Lions a chance to breathe here as Virginia Tech exploding there for a couple chances in succession. Goalkeeper Cortez now reverses play to Deshaux. Bit of space here on the right-hand side for LMU. Also Neville available for the switch if they opt to play it. And Nua Voce tries to flick it on, but well done by the center back there. Lose Ingusen. Goalkeeper now clears. The sun is fully set here in Playa Vista, California. 
or Marina Del Rey, whatever you'd like to call this area, down by LMU. It's beautiful. The sunsets here are something to behold. In this field especially, you get a great view of the sunset just over the trees, and the floodlights are now in full effect at Sullivan Field for LMU's home and season opener. What a night for soccer. This one played in towards the feet of Avoche. Now has a chance. Neville wide open on the backside. Plays it a bit too much on it, but Neville will settle in under it. Good hustle. And a cross is played by Neville right off the chest of Mark Hoppler. Another corner kick coming for the Lions. You can see the hockey's defense is visibly frustrated with themselves after that one. A lack of communication gave Neville that entire uh, near side that'll be the bottom left of your screen. The left side of the field for the Lions was totally open. CJ Neville had an opportunity. It was just over kicked to him a little bit. Did a good job of getting to it, and because of that, the Lions maintained possession. Dangerous ball in towards the keeper once again. It takes a deflection off a defender, and Swanved will try and keep it in bounds. Unable to do so. Another corner kick for the Lions. That's some good hustle play right there by LMU's offense. For the Lions now, Lou finally getting a chance to rest his legs as it'll be Franco checking in. Just about 32 minutes into this contest. Scores LMU 0, Virginia Tech 1. The Lions giving up that early goal in the first minute, but ever since have been right in this game. This ball played towards the back post, looking for show. takes a deflection, still in the box here. And finally cleared away by the Hokies, but the Lions will take it right back. LMU doing a really good job of maintaining possession. We said that was something that they struggled with a little bit earlier in the game, and that's because they really did. They were giving Virginia Tech total control over the pace of play. And LMU, I think, has brought it closer to 50-50, if not even in their favor. We look at the shots on goal are still in favor of the Lions. Six for the Lions, just four for Virginia Tech. Of course, the Hockeys do still lead one zip, but it's not even halftime yet. Now back to Lopez. Just clears this one. Virginia Tech for these last 15 minutes going with the new front line. Striker pairing of Jacob Blavovitz and Justice Coppin. Bringing some fresh legs running at the pairing of Deshaun and Lopez. Lions on the other hand keeping a very similar attacking formation as they have before. Voce still in there alongside Oberlin. We did have Neville sub in. Just around 20 minutes into this game. Virginia Tech with the lead here. No need to push anything. Obviously would love a security goal heading into halftime. The way the Lions have been playing, they can't feel too comfortable about the score line. Physicality there along the sideline gets the crowd fired up a little bit. Lions will take it back. Looks like it'll be a free kick. Taking a while for this one to get going, but LMU will take the three kick, the free kick. Excuse me. 34 minutes have elapsed in this game. The score is one zip in favor of the visiting Virginia Tech Hockeys. But LMU is playing something fierce here, and they are not going quietly. I'll tell you what. With more than a half left to go, the Lions are looking to clinch this one. Yeah, this one will bounce around the midfield. Will fall towards the show. Awkwardly heads it, but fortunately Wood there to help him out. Wood in traffic there, a nice turn. Great control there by Wood. Had two defenders on him, managed to get out of it unscathed. CJ Neville with a heck of a pass. Voce now in towards the box. That one will fall. But a great play there by Neville. Interesting call there from where we sit. Looked like he got the ball, but official saw it otherwise. That'll kill some momentum for LMU. And Neville is fuming. That was not the call he wanted. He did a great job of recovering and then keeping the ball in play. That was a great opportunity for the Lions. It just went south for him. And Jonathan, especially in a non-conference game early in the season for the Lions, taking the 16th ranked team in the country and really playing them dead even outside of that first minute goal. It's got to be an encouraging sign for Paul Crumpy. Absolutely. You don't want to count your chickens before they're hatched. This is still the first half. But, you know, from what we've seen so far, LMU is looking leaps and bounds from where they were last season. As we said, 6-12 and 12 in the regular season, 3-4 and four in conference play. 
That's not the ball club we're seeing right now, Rayhan. They're playing so much more cohesively as a unit. They're playing together, they're playing smart, and they're giving themselves good opportunities, which is something they struggled with in the past. Now Bloomler into Moyer who lays it off for nobody. This will send LMU the other way. Oberlin on the ball, has plenty of options. He'll opt for Neville who finds himself in quite a bit of space on the left-hand side. Looking for support is Neville. Neville cuts inside, brought down, and it will be a foul called. Another nice bit of skill there from C.J. Neville. And two Lions down on this one. Neville slow to get up, but another Lion will grab a number when we can. That'll be 29. Calixon, Noel Calixon, slow to get up, but walks it off. The referee having a few words with a few of the hockeys. The Lions will maintain possession. Another free kick in a dangerous position here. It'll be Oberlin, I believe, to stand over it again as the show comes over. Gives him a couple words. The show likely one of the better aerial threats for this Lions team. The show now going to a couple of teammates. Looks like he has something in mind here, so keep an eye out for him on this set piece. We saw a great opportunity for the Lions earlier on this game in this exact same situation, Rayhan. Let's see what they can do the second time around. Goalkeeper Swanveld setting up his wall. Oberly here for the Lions. We'll see if Oberly even has a chance to take a shot here. Plenty of space on the left-hand side of the goal. We'll see what he opts to do. Fires one on goal just above the corner. Good idea there. So we saw plenty of space left open from Swanveld. Hits it with a good amount of pace, but just doesn't dip enough to tie things up. It was a good shot and something that Paul Crumpy and the boys practice all the time. When they're doing their warm-ups and practicing their free kicks like that, that's a great shot. You saw it curved inside and then right back to the outside going for that upper left-hand corner. It's a very dangerous shot, super hard to read. Swanfield did a good job. He didn't have to worry about it. It did go outside, but a really well-positioned shot for LMU. I'm liking what they're doing. That's seven shots on goal now for the Lions. Yeah, I think it's a great idea there for Oberly to test the goalkeeper. Swanfield has been busy when it comes to catching crosses, but really hasn't faced... A solid shot on goal against him yet. It's a good idea to test him there. Virginia Tech now trying to get something going forward. Space in here as they play it in behind. The Hokies trying to control it, but Wood once again, brilliant bit of defending. Wins it back to Neville. Nice link up play there for the Lions. will send him free. Now it'll be played in behind the Wood. Trying to chase it down, but a bit too much on it. Back to Virginia Tech. Just over 37 and a half minutes here. The Hokies still lead by one. A throw in and LMU's trying to get it back. The show steps up nicely there, just unable to control it, however. Now Virginia Tech trying to get something going, going forward. Once again, attacking that left-hand side. Cutting inside, playing it towards the edge of the box. This one fizz towards the penalty area, laid off. Handled nicely by LMU, and Neville finds himself with quite a bit of space again going forward. Plays it for Avoce, tracking this one down against Ingerson. Avoce now one-on-one. -on -one. Cuts out wide, fires across low in a dangerous area. And this one will make its way all the way through out of bounds for a Virginia Tech throw-in, but dangerous play there for the Lions, very much knocking on the door here. Boy, that was so close. Avoce did such a good job of being in position. It was a drag race all the way down to the ball. He put on the afterburners and got there first. Waited. It was a very smart play. He got himself in position. He was poised, and he was ready. It was a really good shot for the Lions. I like what I'm seeing. LMU now, especially after that first goal, great play switching the field there. Neville finding himself in a bit of space. Almost getting there as Wood, but it forces a clearance. Now laid off for Bloomler. Bloomler very active. Great tackle there by Neville. We'll send it out of bounds. Able to slow things down. You see Neville with his smile on his face after that, after the little check there from Bloomer. It'll fall at the back post here. Virginia Tech has sent in plenty of crosses from this position. And they will send another. 
headed away but not convincingly by the Lions. Bloomler trying to send it back into the middle. Now Deshaux gets a bit more on it. This ball bounces around the midfield. Interesting play there. No foul called. Lions find themselves in some space. Now pressing forward here is LMU. Kaliskan now has options, plays it towards the back post looking for a voce, but it will be another corner kick for the Lions who are flying right now, Jonathan. Ingenson was just in the right place at the right time, Rayhan. Otherwise, I think that ball would have hit the back of the net. I think it was Virginia Tech being a little bit lazy on the transition there, and LMU just all hustle getting down there. Yeah, really great attacking play by the Lions. They'll settle in on another corner kick. Oberly will finally get a chance to rest his legs. And honestly, ever since Virginia Tech took out their starting front two of Kwashi and I believe it was Strickler, they've had a tough time creating chances, and LMU's really been in control of the attacking side of things. We are getting some fresh legs on here for LMU. We'll get you updated with the number in just a moment. As Rayhan, as you said, another corner kick for the Lions. This one floated towards the back post. Caught there. Swanfeld in really good position. That ball didn't quite drop enough for LMU to get a real shot at it, but it was a good take nonetheless. And I'd like to see the Lions get a couple more shots on goal here. They've been in dangerous areas, always looking for that extra cross. Swanfeld has been busy in catching passes here, but we saw Oberly take a couple chances from deep, and there's a good chance they might be able to catch the keeper sleeping if they're able to get a shot in these next four minutes. Throw in here for the Lions. Looks like it'll be Wood standing over it. Christian Wood, such a smart player. Let's see what he does here. There's a couple options inside. He's going to get the Lions out of a tricky situation if they're going to make something happen here in the closing minutes of the half. Of course, Virginia Tech eager to do the same. This one will bounce around and go out of bounds for Virginia Tech. Entering the game for the Lions, interesting enough, was number 12, Gaetan Rowe. Rowe is a transfer from Virginia Tech. So a chance to play against his old team here. This one will go out of bounds for a goal kick. Some pretty big contact there. Down at the end line, Gerardo Lopez knocking shoulders. Slow to get up and back in the action. Lions trying to control the ball on the right-hand side of things. Once again, Neville standing in plenty of space. We'll see if Desho picks him out. Slowing things down, down the middle. Just resetting by way of the goalkeeper. The way the Lions have really controlled momentum, really, for the last 20 minutes, they'd love to actually finish one of these counterattacking opportunities. But on the flip side, Virginia Tech, a very dangerous team who can Le score at any point. Leo Zuli was the sub that is in now for the Lions. And great switch there. Neville, again, just unable to control it, but it will stay with LMU out to Wood. Wood checks in a row. This ball now played across. Great Shot job. fired from well outside, but... Just a bit wide. In correction, it was Duhaney Williams that came in just a while ago. Time winding down, 43 minutes and just about 25 seconds. Virginia Tech still up 1-0 to the Lions. Let's see what Swansfeld decides to do here. This one played in long, headed down well by the Lions. Kaliskan on that one. This one will bounce around. And Avoce will be brought down, but a foul against LMU. Crowd not seeing it that way. Now it'll be the Hokies once again on a free kick. Ingeson taking his time with it. Coming Less up on a minute left. Less than a minute to go. The Hokies are taking their time as is expected with a one-point lead. Cortez not wasting any time. As soon as it's safe to do so, that is. He's going to get the ball downfield as soon as possible. Ingeson bouncing it around. LMU trying to gain possession in the middle. It appears that they will now as Rowe has the chance. Rowe trying to play it in behind, just not enough on it. 
20 seconds left here in the half for LMU. Looking to push the issue here, potentially get another shot off before we take you to the break. It's going to be a last opportunity here. It's going to be interesting to see what happens after halftime going into the half. This has been a very interesting game so far. Here's the throw in. This one towards Avoche falls for the lines in a dangerous area. Shot taken here and fizzed over the bar, well over the bar rather. That'll do it for your first half of action. The Lions trail this one one to nothing. It was the Bloomler goal in the first minute that put Virginia Tech ahead, but outside of goals, the stats rundown is shots, LMU six to four, shots on goal, two apiece, two saves from Virginia Tech, one from the Lions. Fouls are six apiece. Four corners for LMU, two to Virginia Tech. The Lions were caught offsides twice and Virginia Tech was not offsides. Interesting first half of action. Jonathan, what are your thoughts? Well, you know, I think the Lions showed a really good progression of play here. They started off very sloppy, if we're being honest, and I think Virginia Tech just caught him sleeping defensively in that first one. 11 shots on goal after one half of play is fantastic. Virginia Tech doesn't even have half of that at four. Of course, Virginia Tech is still leading in the only points category that matters, and that is points scored. That being said, the Lions are going to have a lot to talk about at halftime. We'll see you when we return to the break in a couple of minutes. You're watching Lions men's soccer the WCC Network. I got it. I'll just throw you a question. Welcome back, everybody, to Sullivan Field. Once again, alongside Jonathan Grace, I'm Rayhan Bald, bringing you today's action. Give me a quick halftime update here. The Lions trail this one, one nothing against Virginia Tech. Slow start for them, as Bloomer put one in the back of the net, just about 55 seconds into it. But really, after the first 10 minutes, Jonathan, it was all Lions. Boy, this game has really changed a lot, Rayhan, and you know, definitely the. Uh, the second half of that first half of play was so much better for LMU. I mean, it was a night and day difference. This ball club is so much improved from where they were last year. You know, it makes me so happy to see. I was fortunate enough to call their first game last year, and boy, this is a whole different ball club. Whether or not they win or lose this game, Paul Crumpy has got to go back into Gerson Pavilion with his chin up and his head held high, and so do all of these guys out here on the field. They are just playing so much more cohesively as a unit. And to take on the number 16 ranked team in the nation and look like this, boy, that's impressive. Yeah, it's a Virginia Tech team that comes into this season with very high expectations. As we, were, as we mentioned at the start of the game, a lot of returning players, a lot of experience, and plenty of talent led by Strickler. The Lions particularly did a great job shutting Strickler down in that first half. The center back pairing of Lopez and Deshaux were all over him. Saw Virginia Tech continuously trying to play long balls into him, but really no chance for him winning any headers there. 
Heading into the second half, Jonathan, if the Lions are able to break through, any predictions on who it would be? Well, you know, gosh, sorry, as we were just getting handed the box scores here and I was taking a quick peek at it. Gosh, you know, Alex Liu is in such good position. He's playing that midfield. He's been so strong defensively, but he's also been really strong in transition, Rayhan. He's gotten the ball down there so many times and he's so quick and light on his feet. It's just an absolute joy to watch him work out there. Uh, you know, Christian Wood, too. Uh, you know, he's doing so much good work out there. Francis Avoche is doing really well. Gerardo Lopez has kind of been one of those players that I want to touch on. And while offensively, he hasn't really done anything. I mean, he's a defender. He's not really expecting much from a defender offensively. But he's been one of those players just kind of quietly going about his business, doing a really nice job out there. And, uh, you know, he, he's, he's doing a really nice job. I have to say, though, Cervantes for LMU has two shots on goal. That's the most of any lion out there. And that's pretty good. You know, yeah. he's, he's taking time and he's trying to get himself opportunities and get himself looks. And that's was that's kind of what plagued the Lions so much last year. And even the season before that is they did a really good job of, of kind of getting the ball onto the other half of the field. But they couldn't set up shots and they couldn't execute. And today they're setting up the shots a lot, much, a lot better uh, and much better than they have in seasons past. So it's going to have to be down to the execution, Rayhan. Yeah, I think the one thing LMU offensively did especially well in that first half was switching the field of play. The two wide players, whether that be Lou or Neville, who came on about halfway through that first half, really had their way running down the sideline. And the center backs, the show and Lopez, have done a good job keeping their heads up and looking to reverse the field to them. Either of those players, when they find themselves in space, could be big trouble for Virginia Tech. Really, for the Lions, it's just a matter of getting someone on the end of these crosses. They've done a great job getting in behind out wide, but when the cross ultimately comes into the box, it's a matter of who can actually be there to tap it into the goal. So far, positionally, Savoce responsible for that, but he's been really focused on linking up, keeping possession for the line. So we'll see who ultimately gets on the end of one of these crosses. Absolutely. And we'll send you another break in just a moment here, and we'll catch back up with more of a summary of the game and how we think things are going to turn out in the second half of play. On behalf of Jonathan Grace, excuse me, on behalf of Rayhan Ball, I'm Jonathan Grace. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone. Once again, alongside Jonathan Grace, I'm Ray Hunt Ball, bringing you a final quick halftime update. We're just about six minutes from kickoff. Lions shelled this one 1-0 one against the 16th-ranked Virginia Tech Hokies here on Sullivan Field. Just about six minutes before we kick things off in the second half. Jonathan, how do you see the second half going? You know, I think the Lions can put one in the back of the net, Rayhan, in this second half. The way they're playing, if they keep this up, they put some really good shots on goal, 11 of them, as a matter of fact. And... The Hokies have only put four, which is surprising considering the score, but 
you know, not all that surprising if you've watched this last half. And boy, what a half it was. The Lions started out really slow. They were kind of caught sleeping, and the Hokies capitalized just 55 seconds in. The Lions said no way, and they came right on back. And although they haven't scored, as we said, 11 shots on goal, they've been in good position. They've taken some really good takes and shots. You know, it, they, they've turned things around. We've said it a number of times, but it looks like a whole different ball club, Rehan. I think going forward, the Lions can equalize if not take the lead in this one. Yeah, I would definitely agree with you. There will be interesting to be a fly on the wall in the LMU locker room at this time. I'm sure manager Paul Crumpy very pleased with the play of his Lions so far. We have the 16th ranked team in the entire country very much within striking distance. And as you mentioned, Jonathan, I would agree it wouldn't be surprising at all to see the Lions break into the scoring column here and potentially even get multiple goals the way they're playing in the second half. But on the flip side for Virginia Tech, if they want to close this one out and get the win, who are some key players that need to step up? We know Virginia Tech, before I talk about key players, I want to talk about the team dynamic as a whole. I think defensively they need to change their strategy a little bit and kind of widen out. They're letting uh, you know, not much through on the inside. They're doing a good job of closing in. But in terms of letting people in on the wings, that's kind of been their downfall a little bit. And it's how the Lions have been able to set up some really nice, long, wide shots. Of course, you would rather have a team take those longer shots than you would shots from the inside, but it's still shots on goal nonetheless. And, you know, and that's not ideal if you're a team, you know, especially if you're that goalie. And, boy, the, the Hokies defense got to work out in that last one. You know, someone I do want to talk about for a little bit, though, is Strickler. In the preseason uh, for Virginia Tech, Strickler was given some, some preseason nods. Here he was added to the ACC watch list. Uh, he's the junior forward. He was placed on that ACC watch list preseason, uh, and it was announced by the conference. He led the Hokies with 10 goals and 24 points in the 2018 season. So pretty impressive figures there. And he scored four game-winning goals. So Strickler, I think, is someone to keep an eye on. The other one is the man who scored the first goal of the game, Bloomer. You know, he's so quick and light on his feet. We saw him really be so explosive in the opening minutes of this game. I think he's fallen off just a little bit, but maybe some hydration and rest at halftime is all that he needs to kind of get that explosiveness back. What about for the Lions, Rahal? Who are you seeing as being a key to the second half? Yeah, for the Lions, someone who I'd love to see step up would be the striker, Francis Avoce. I'd like to see him play similar to what we saw out of Nico Quashi in those first 10 to 15 minutes in which Virginia Tech was very much in control. Avoce really checking back to the ball, being able to be a strong presence, holding on to it, and allowing those faster players, whether it be Neville or Lou, to really run off him and get in behind would be a great changeup for the Lions in the second half. As you mentioned, Virginia Tech really compact defensively, and that's been credit to Avoce needing to commit multiple bodies to him inside, has opened up players outside, but I would agree that I would assume Virginia Tech really spreads things out in this second half to try and slow down the pace of the Lions, and that might really open things up for Francis inside. Absolutely. And we'll send to another break in just a little bit here, but before that, I really want to talk about one other player for Virginia Tech, and that's James Kasich. James Kasich, excuse me, he's been so quick and light on his feet and able to get into position better than almost anyone else on that Virginia Tech team, and I think he's going to be really dangerous. He is credited with the assist early on, and I think he's going to be a force to be reckoned with going forward here. We'll rejoin you in just a moment for the second half of play. It's just about two minutes left to go. On behalf of Rayhan Ball, I'm Jonathan Grace. We'll be right back.
Welcome back, everyone. Alongside Jonathan Grace, I'm Rayhan Ball, bringing you today's action between the Lions of LMU and their home opener against the 16th-ranked Virginia Tech Hokies. Your score is Virginia Tech 1, LMU 0. The differentiator was a first-minute goal by number 31, Jacob Bloomler. But outside of that, it's been all Lions in the first half. The shot differential, LMU 11 to Virginia Tech's 4. Lions with three corner kicks to two corner kicks for the Hokies. Both goalkeepers have been relatively quiet. Swanveld has two saves, but he's done a great job coming out catching crosses and one save for Cortez. Plenty of momentum going into the half for the Lions, but Jonathan, it's really about if LMU can keep that momentum going and step on it against a very good Virginia Tech team to kick things off. Absolutely. I think, as you said, Rayhan, momentum is so important in soccer, especially collegiate soccer. And we'll flop sides of the fields now, and we'll see if the fortune for LMU can flop as well in terms of score, that is. Play-wise, I don't think they're doing anything wrong. They're not putting one single foot out of place here. Everybody's hustling. Everybody's out there doing as best they can, and they're looking really strong. And for LMU entering this second half, It'll be a lineup very similar to what ended that first half. Still out there for the Lions, Dehaney Williams, number seven on that right-hand side, as well as Rowe in the midfield, the ex-Virginia Tech product. For Virginia Tech, similar to what they ended with, except they have brought back their starting striker duo of Strickler and Quashi. Ever since those two came out, the Lions really took control of the game, so we'll see if they can keep up the momentum despite the new substitutions. Great pressure there from Williams will force it out of bounds and back to the Lions. Boy, very physical play right off the bat there. Some words being exchanged. All friendly, I'm sure. This one in a row. Sends it down. Too much on it for a Voce, but he'll continue to press. Nice job there by Voce, forcing a long clearance by the goalkeeper. Strickler is brought down, no foul called. Lions will keep it. Now coming the other way is LMU. LMU is really going to want to start off here as strong as they can, and they look good so far, but they're going to have to keep maintaining position and giving themselves good looks and good opportunities. They want to keep the pressure on the number 16 team in the country. A big run here by Cervantes as he's brought down, and that is a dangerous challenge by number two there, Will Mejia. We'll see if any card is handed out by the official. The crowd not a fan of that one. A great run there by Cervantes, just dancing between defenders. Well, Cervantes made his way through about half of the Virginia Tech defense on that one. Bobbing and weaving, he looked invincible. He was brought down. It will be a free kick for the Lions. Standing over it for LMU, we have Voce. Looks like it might be Oberly on top of it as well. Oberly. It's had a couple good cracks at it, just unfortunately been about a foot or so wide each time. This one might be better suited for the left foot of Devoche, but we'll see which one ends up getting to give it a go. Referee just giving a quick talking to to the defensive wall that was just set up by the goalkeeper, Swanveld. Now Lions. Devoche fires a low ball in towards the goal. It'll bounce around, still fall for LMU, who sends it right back in towards the show in the box. The I show flicks it back. I'll tell you what, if no one had been standing in the way, Swanfield had no idea where that ball is. It was so low to the ground, you couldn't see over everyone's heads. That was a good idea there by LMU. As you mentioned, Swanfield completely screened by the ongoing traffic. Lions looking like they're still possessing some of that life they entered the halftime locker room with. This one now thrown in. Player brought down, foul called. LMU will get a free kick in another relatively dangerous area. So far, just three minutes in, but good sign the Lions are continuing where they left off. A lot of stop and go plays so far. It's going to be really tough for the Lions trying to maintain that momentum when you're constantly stopping and having to readjust and get your players on a different side of the field. Something that I liked a lot in the second half of the first half of play is how flowing the game was. You know, aside from a couple throw-ins and corner kicks. Whoa, very close opportunity there for the Lions. But as we were saying, it, it was just a, a good dynamic flow of a game. There wasn't much stoppage in play, and the Lions were able to just get into a groove. Hopefully, 
the same can be done here, Rayhan. Yeah, and another chance there for LMU, very similar to what happened earlier, in which a ball played into the box, simply lost in traffic there for the goalkeeper, Swanville. This time, it actually makes its way through the crowd, but just wide of the post. Another great chance for LMU there. As you mentioned at halftime, it just really feels like the Lions are on the verge of breaking through here. But against a team like Virginia Tech, you can never be sure. Now the Hokies linking up down that right-hand side. Kwashi has a chance, plays a low ball inside, too much on it. Goal kick, all danger averted there for LMU. Now a long ball played towards Williams, turns him around. Williams continues to press. Good job there getting back on the ball. Now in plenty of traffic. Not much he could do there. Yeah, Williams was tripled up right off the bat there. They knew he's a good ball handler and he's dangerous when he does get the ball into his feet. And Virginia Tech took care of it right away. Cortez now helping out the Hokies a bit, picking up the play. Throwing it in for Virginia Tech. It'll be James Kasak. Now Virginia Tech really taking their time with this throw in. Yeah, the Hokies really milking that one. Boy, just a shade under a decade to get this rolling again. Yeah, good sign for the Lions there. It's Virginia Tech just trying to get settled into the second half. LMU jumping right on them. Voce once again, good job pressing the keeper, forcing a long clearance. It's the little things that really count here in a tight game like this. As you said, Rayhan, the little things are counting for Avoche. That pressure is going to make Swanfield just that much more cautious, and if you can get a goalie hearing footsteps, that's when they tend to make a mistake. Now Virginia Tech looking to play another ball long. Lopez, as always, there for LMU. This ball just bouncing around back and forth. It'll end up with Cervantes. Cervantes playing it down to Williams. Nice little flick there in a the row. And row brought down from behind. Now Williams, nice bit of skill there. Plays a low ball into the box, takes the deflection back to Virginia Tech. It'll land with Cervantes. Rowe looks to have tweaked his ankle there. Gets up very gingerly. Keep an eye on that injury here. Cervantes brought down again. And the Hokies taking a couple shots at LMU here. It's getting chippy. Very chippy. Oh, new crowd very much picking up on that. Not a fan of the antics. Big ball switched to the opposite side by Deshaw. It'll fall for Wood. Now a big tackle in there. Lion player down but not injured. Well, he came in from the next county on that one, Rayhan. Yeah, it's very physical. And Deshaw steps up right there for the Lions, one of the bigger players on LMU. Not going to be pushed around. Player down for the Hokies, and that almost freed up Avoche, but you have someone who seems to be relatively seriously injured there. We'll see. Shoe did come off there as he was brought down. Get you a number as soon as we get one. For the first time this evening, the clock has been stopped at 51 minutes and 36 seconds. 12 shots on goal for the Lions, just four for the Hokies. The injured Hokie is now standing up. We'll try to get you a number. He's on the far side of the field, so we're doing our darndest to, to see what that number is. He puts his cleat back on and gets to his feet. He did look to be pretty shaken up, though. Glad he's standing up now under his own power. It looks like he will continue in, and there will be no need for a substitution. As he gets the shoestrings tied, hopefully LMU can get this game tied up. They are just trailing by one. You know, yeah. it's easier said than done in a game of soccer, but I think the way LMU is playing right now, if they can keep on this same track and keep playing together like they are, they're going to give themselves a good enough opportunity where the ball might land in the back of the net. Yeah, and Virginia Tech really getting all they bargained for here, cross-country road trip to Los Angeles, we mentioned, now taking on LMU, and right after they'll be a couple hours north in Santa Barbara to take on the Gauchos, but Lions making it very clear that nothing will be easy tonight. This one will fall for show. Has some space on the right-hand side as he'll flick one. Looking in behind for Williams, it'll fall, and Williams will get on the end of it. Nice little turn there, but a bit too heavy on the touch. He'll go out for a goal kick. What good hustle there by Williams. My gosh, he was leaning into that one at darn near a 45-degree angle. He's trying his 
best to stay in bounds and I think the ball had other ideas. And going back to your point there about the Virginia Tech schedule, boy, Rayhan, if they get nothing else out of this trip, they're going to have an awesome tour of the California coast here. Yeah, two beautiful campuses in Loyola Marymount and Santa Barbara. Nice little vacation for the friends and family of the Hokies players. Players, on the other hand, very much getting pushed to their brink here against the Lions. Nice little combination play in the middle to free up some space. It'll be Quashi now lays it off. Still coming down the right-hand side are the Hokies. Plays the ball in. Great clearance, but still dangerous. This one will be tipped. Danger avoided for now for LMU as Cervantes will play it up to Williams. But another good chance for Virginia Tech. Rowe brought down again. And Rowe has taken a beating over these last 15 minutes. The ref finally pulling out the yellow card. Much to the excitement of the home fans. Well, I think, you know, it was just one too many times taken down for Rowe. He's really been nursing that leg. We saw him be taken down early in the first half, and then just a couple minutes ago, he's now jogging the back. They try to do as much as we can as the official did issue out a yellow card, as you said, Rayhan. First yellow card of the game at 52 minutes and 57 seconds as we're 53 even here in the second half of play. Now this one almost played in behind. Good idea there by Voce, just a bit offline. Strickler now trying to settle things down for Virginia Tech. Bit of space down the left-hand side, and they will go there. Hokies now Kasich charging down, looking to play a low ball in, and he does. Dangerous area here, and it'll be cleared just wide. That ball was away from the outstretched arm of Cortez, but defender for the Lions bailing him out there. Cervantes playing some really strong defense right now. We saw him on that last play before Rowe was taken down. I guess two plays ago that was. And here on this last one, he was right in the mix as well. Good job from Alfredo Cortez in the white cage. Now throw in here for the Hokies. The Moyer sends it towards the near post. Great defensive header there by the Lions. Looked like Cervantes on the end of that one. This one hit towards the edge of the box, just over the head of the official. Cervantes now making another big run. Wisely pulls it back and settles things down with Deshaux. Deshaux now surveying the field. Plenty of options. He'll go back to the goalkeeper. Lions now swinging things around. This ball played long towards Oberly, but too much on it. Virginia Tech will settle. It's tough when you see those shots go long like that because you know there's not much you can do about it as a striker. If it's over your head, you don't want to risk the offside, so you have to stay back. But of course, in doing that, you risk the defender getting to it first and losing your chance altogether. And that was actually Rowe, not overly making the run there. Now dangerous here as Virginia Tech finds a bit of space going forward. Heavy touch there from Strickler. Allows Cervantes to catch up. The Hokies now trying to get something going. They would love a second goal to slow things down. Strickler in a bit of space will play across towards the penalty area. Cleared well by Deshaux. Pereira will keep it. Now reversing field is Virginia Tech, but Woods all over it for LMU. Avoce, nice tackle to win the ball back for the Lions. This ball played in to Avoce. Takes a hit, but keeps possession for LMU. Voce trying to go quick on the throw to row, but the official stopping the play as we'll get another substitution for the Lions. Looks like it'll be Williams exiting the game for LMU, and right back in will be Alex Liu. And in that first half, Jonathan, Alex Liu was a big factor for LMU. I think they might have just been giving him a little bit of rest. He was running an awful line out there, as are all these guys, but... Lou especially playing that midfield position. His defense was spot on. He was even doing really well in transition, giving some really good looks. He steps out wide here to maybe give himself a chance and now takes the ball. And across from Lou will take a deflection right back out of bounds. Lions will keep possession by way of a throw and quick throw there. Now it's floated towards the back post. Devoche trying to get on the end of this one. This one's headed towards the goalkeeper. No trouble there for Swanveld, but... Once again, as we've seen in these last 
40 or so minutes, LMU continuously putting pressure on Virginia Tech. It's just a matter of getting solid contact on that final pass. Well, Swanfield credited now in this game with two official saves. But he's had his hands full. It seemed like awfully a lot more than that, the way LMU's been playing. They've given themselves now 13 good opportunities. Even the Lions' defense now is, or the offense, excuse me, putting a lot of pressure on the Hokies' defense, making it very difficult to clear the ball. Even when Virginia Tech is maintaining possession, LMU's making it really difficult for them to get it to their side of the field. That transition play has been really key for LMU today, disrupting the transition play for the Hokies and maximizing the time that they have with the ball. This one will go down the sideline. Bouncing around, Lopez and show all over it. Cervantes now far more involved in the second half, but an errand pass there, I'll send it back to Virginia Tech. Now down the sideline, Kasich. Kasich turns Cervantes now inside in a dangerous area. Cervantes, good job catching up there. Nice recovery speed. A dangerous little throw there by the goalkeeper, but Virginia Tech had their backs turned. Nice bit of skill there, advancing things. Voce will lay it off. To show instructing Cervantes to spread out. Ball bouncing around, neither team really in possession of it. Now the Lions will finally get a chance to settle. Lou calling for the long ball, but a bit too far away right now. Now calling for Lou, making a big run in behind. They will play it towards him. Lou trying to track this one down, but it's a bit too far inside. No problem there for the goalkeeper. As, as you mentioned, Jonathan, Swanveld only credited with three saves, but he's most definitely been busy tonight. Absolutely. I was going to say a bit of a barrel roll there for Kasich. He was hustling down to make sure Lou didn't get an opportunity. That just shows you how well LMU is putting pressure on. And Oh, miscommunication there might give the Lions a chance. Good save there, but Lou's going to try to get in the way of it. Now Rowe controlling the ball in a dangerous area to Cervantes. Good idea there on the turn. Once again, Lions doing a good job of forcing a long ball, but it's all but safe for LMU as Strickler is battling with the show. Strickler will end up with it. Tries to play it through. Foul call, Lions fans. Not appreciative of that call. This will give Virginia Tech. Oh, and some extracurricular activities here on the field. That's not what you'd like to see. You know, you always hope that both teams are going to be sporting here. Some pushing and shoving, the referee having none of it. Putting a stop to that very quickly. Now it'll settle down, free kick, dangerous area for Virginia Tech. See Pereira standing over this one alongside Kasik. They have Moyers as a nice option to drop it at the top of the box if they choose, but plenty of bodies at the back post. They opt to go there as well. Now it's just Pereira on this one. He'll chip this one towards the back post. Dangerous, but well defended by the Lions. Possession will stay with Virginia Tech. Hokies now moving it back. Mejia, good pressure from Lou. Virginia Tech now looking a little less sloppy as they did before, trying to maintain possession a little bit better than they did to start things off. 60 minutes have elapsed, almost 61. And now they're starting to get some good looks down towards Cortez. LMU, though, trying their best to avoid this situation. Some good defense there. This one is deflected out of bounds. Right off the chest of Cervantes. Cervantes, Cervantes very much involved in the second half. It's been a big part defensively. And, you know, I think it's just as much as Gerardo Lopez and Dosho and Lou were in the first half of play. I think Cervantes is really making the most of his time out here, here in the second. He's been a huge force. He's been all over the field, especially covering this near side. You can see how hard he's fighting. Dangerous ball there will be deflected just wide of the goal, but 
tough spot there for LMU as Kwashi almost got on the end of that one. Well, That'll bring in a couple subs for LMU. You could feel Cortez's blood pressure going up there. So Jack Sauls will check into the game. And Bastion Oberly as well. A chance for Avoche to get his first rest of the night. I would assume we'd see him back in action before everything's said and done. Probably saving him for those last crucial minutes. Try to get an extra opportunity. Interesting play there. As Lopez just sat down with the ball. They managed to keep it in possession. Also entering the game for the Lions was Oberly, very involved in that first half. That ball just a bit behind the attacking LMU player. We'll go back to Virginia Tech. Oberly coming in for Gaetan Rowe. Rowe took a beating out there from some of his former teammates, but played well for the Lions. This one played in behind towards Sauls, but Virginia Tech all over it. Good pressure by LMU once again. We'll give them a throw in in an attacking area. 63 minutes have elapsed here at elapsed, excuse me, here at Sullivan Field, the home and season opener for the LMU Lions, playing the number 16 ranked team in the nation, or number 19, depending on which poll you look at. Either way, a tough and formidable opponent for LMU. The ball's crossed in the middle and. Just sails over the goal, a missed opportunity there for LMU, but a good take nonetheless. LMU does trail one to zip, but they have 14 shots on goal compared to the Hockeys who have six. Speaking of the Hockeys, they will bring in some fresh legs with the substitution and it gives their defense a chance to tie their shoes. Lions continuing to put pressure on Virginia Tech. We've seen LMU really controlling the attacking play for over 45 minutes now, but at the end of the day, they can't put one past Swanveld. Virginia Tech will come away with the win. This one played in behind looking for Sauls. Bouncing around in the midfield, settles with LMU. Cervantes now has Lou out wide. He will play it to him. Lou, Cervantes, overlapping run. Cervantes staying a bit more forward. Lions now working it around that left-hand side. Nice turn in by LMU. Looks like Wood there working the left-hand side. Almost brought down, but he will force a clearance, as the Lions have done very well recently. That'll give them a chance to make a substitution. We'll get another substitution here. A handful of subs on both sides of the field. It'll be number 26 for the Lions. Cesar Olivia coming into the game for the first time this evening. Just, uh, just under, excuse me, 65 minutes have elapsed in this game. Score, shots, and stats pretty much all remain the same. It's been a much slower and much different paced second half, Rayhan. A lot more stopping, a lot more stoppages of play. It hasn't been as fluid and dynamic as that first half was when the Lions were really able to go on a roll in terms of possession and offense yeah you're right Virginia Tech definitely making an effort to tighten things up toughen the game up a little bit not allowing LMU to get some free-flowing counter-attacking play going to show finds himself in a tough spot he'll clear it out of bounds back to Virginia Tech but from the LMU side I think a lot of the attacking play going forward might have to come more through the middle than we saw in the first half Virginia Tech making an adjustment similar to what you suggested Jonathan and really widening things out within their back four. So we'll see whoever the center forward is for LMU in these next 30 minutes, whether it's Sauls currently on the field or Avoche likely to come back in. They're able to split the middle here. It's a long throw in from Virginia Tech will come towards the penalty area, headed away easily by Lopez, but Virginia Tech will send another one towards the back post. Looks like Wood will get on the end of that one, but not convincingly. This one floated towards the back post, now towards Strickler, and it'll be shepherded out of bounds by the Lions. I think as, as Virginia Tech's defense continues to widen out and adjust to LMU, they're going to have to adjust right back and maybe close back into the center. It's a different style of play from what they've been doing so far in this game, but 
if they can capitalize on that offensive strategy, I think they might be able to give themselves a good look. But they can't give up the ball like they're doing now to Virginia Tech. Dangerous here for Virginia Tech. Big step up there for LMU. Virginia Tech still pressing forward. Edge of the box here. This one floated towards the back post. Headed away nicely by the Lions. Lou tracking back onto this one. Trying to get LMU going the other way. Lou plays a long ball down the middle. Looking for Sauls as it'll be cleared right over our heads there. 67 minutes in here. Well, time is winding down bit by bit here. There's still a lot of soccer left to play. With that being said, the goal can be hard to come by here at Sullivan Field. Olivia now taking responsibility of the right back duties, giving Cervantes a chance to rest up. This is a big switch. Doesn't connect, but good pressure from Orbelie. Wins it back for LMU, and now falls to Sauls in the box. Shot, and in! The Lions tie things up here. as a great play by Oberly, I believe, in behind the Sauls. Ties things up, one to one, 67 minutes in. Boy, Oberly was in traffic. He had a lot of defenders on him. The smoke comes out as the Black and Gold Lions, it's a support club on campus for the LAFC, blows smoke bombs all over, and the crowd is loving it. The flags donning the new LMU Spirit Lion are waving a lighter blue than you may be used to. And just like that, Rayhan, we've got a ball game. Yeah, and it is officially the way that we thought we saw it. Bastian Oberly with the assist to Jack Sauls. And for Sauls, that's got to feel good coming in in the second half. Limited playing time in this one, but gets the best chance of the game for LMU and credit to him staying composed and slotting it away. That was a great shot by Sauls, as we said. He no. ran into traffic. Maybe another opportunity here. No, just saved. It's an amazing save there from Matias Swanveld. Undoubtedly the biggest moment of the game there. The Lions tie things up and Oberly found himself in behind. It was a good shot by Oberly and Swanveld just barely getting his foot there. And now this Lions crowd has come alive alongside their team. Boy, someone want, may want to check Swanfield's pulse here as he comes out for another one and knocks shoulders with a Lions attacker. It's a huge moment there. If the Lions are able to slot that away and take a two to one lead, dare I say this one could have gotten out of hand for Virginia Tech. But an absolutely stunning save from D Swanveld keeps them right in this game. Despite that save, momentum still definitely and squarely with LMU. As LMU gets a little help from the fans there as they toss it over to Olivia. Now Oberly pulled down. Dangerous play there from Pereira. Really no effort going for the ball there, but Questionable switch will fall for LMU in a bit of space. Great job by Lou tracking back on that one. Plenty of pressure on Mejia. Lou doing a great job of making it very difficult for Virginia Tech to clear the ball to the other side of the court. The, <laughs> excuse me, the <laughs> field. <laughs> I'm in the wrong sport, Rayhan. And despite not finishing that chance, another ball in behind for Sauls here. We'll see if he can get under this one. Looks like he will. Plays a shot towards the goal. No trouble there for Swanveld, but... Looks like the pace of Jack Sauls is really thrown off this back line of Virginia Tech. And even though the second chance wasn't finished off, it's all the energy LMU needed one to one. All Lions so far. You know, I think unfortunately for LMU, those low side angle shots are going to be eaten up by Swanfield. He's too good of a goalkeeper to let those squeak past him. And you saw even when he was in a difficult situation by himself, one on one, he managed to stay calm, stay back, and he got the save. Now Lou finds himself in a bit of space. They do pick him out on the long ball, but it's a bit too far ahead. Like the idea there for LMU, Swanveld choosing to keep it in bounds, not wanting to waste any time on the goal kick. Constant pressure from Lou as that one's chipped nicely over his head. And I would assume these last 20 minutes of regulation, if the first 70 have been indicative of anything, will be very exciting. So pinball play back and forth. Lou just with a little miscommunication there as he tried to pass off the ball to his teammate. Hokies now Pereira trying to play a nice ball in behind. Great recovery from Deshaux. Interesting header there from Saul as he found himself plenty of space. Now Virginia Tech pushing forward. Urgency now 
for the 16th ranked team in the country. Now cutting towards the edge of the box. Potential shot fired, and it's just wide. Boy, what a good shot, though. Maybe six inches off the goal, maybe. Yeah, Kasich really getting a hold of that one. Cortez just away from his outstretched fingertips, but fortunately enough for this Lions crowd just outside of the post. Couple subs coming in for the Lions. It'll be San Ramon entering the game alongside Neville. And Jonathan, when Neville came in in that first half, he really shifted things and got things going for the Lions. Absolutely, Rayhan, he really did. And boy, it's been so nice and refreshing for LMU. You know, this game as a whole has really showed what they've worked on over the off season and what Paul Crumpy has been drilling these guys, you know, so, so hard since the end of last season. You know, it, it's, it's a refreshing look at a Lions program that has needed an uplifting performance like this for a while. Yeah, and we'll see what the Lions opt to do. Big coaching decision for Crumpy going forward. Saul's coming in as the new center forward has really shaked things up for Virginia Tech, but Avoce, obviously one of the better players on this roster. We'll see who he opts to finish the game with. Now the Hokies, nice turn, find themselves in a bit of space, but the Lions very well closing out. Now counterattack here, Oberly trying to play it in behind for LMU. They'll stay with it, and it'll be a handball Momentum killer there for the Lions. They had plenty of numbers going forward. Oberly probably rushing it a bit, playing it out wide. Saul's there having none of the quick restart by Virginia Tech. We'll get a yellow card for that. Interesting call by the referee, but I don't know about that one. I mean, it wasn't very sporting of him to, to stand in the way, but you know, it's not like he was... I mean, he kind of was deliberately delaying play there. Yeah, honestly, a bit of gamesmanship there from Sauls, but at the end of the day, might have been worth it for LMU, just giving a chance for them to get their back line all set up. Now it'll be goalkeeper Swanveld. Sauls will be awarded, if you could even say that, with a <laughs> yellow card for his actions. I'll come in the 72nd minute. This ball will pinball around the midfield. Still no clear possession either side. Looks like Virginia Tech might settle in on this one. Dangerous area shot just wide of the post. And a bit of a scare there for Alfredo Cortez as it fell in a very dangerous area for one of the strikers of Virginia Tech. Put a good low shot on, but just a bit wide. This one bouncing around the midfield. Handball will be called back to LMU. It was Nick Blacklock who just put it wide of the post there for the Hokies. Now show settle things down for the Lions. Well, Virginia Tech trying to put some more pressure on LMU in their clearing game. Maybe taking a couple notes out of LMU's playbook from earlier. They knock it on back to Cortez, who's immediately under pressure. But LMU no, now struggling to get the ball across the second half of the field, and they do now, but they're in traffic, and interesting offsides call there. It looked for sure from our angle like he wasn't. Yeah, Saul is another good run in behind, but the official not allowing it much to the anger of the LMU faithful. Some interesting calls these last two here from the officials. Of course, they have a better vantage point than we do from up here in the booth, but interesting calls nonetheless. Player brought down, Lions thought they had the counterattack, but it'll stay with Virginia Tech. Once again, entering the 75th minute roughly here at Sullivan Field. Just about 15 minutes of regulation left to be played. Been a very exciting first 75 here. Honestly, could go either way here in the last 15. Nice pressure there for the Lions, almost winning the ball. This one will be floated back towards LMU. It'll fall for Oberly in plenty of space. Oberly has options. Plays a nice switch. Great ball there by Oberly. Opens things up for Beautiful. LMU. Now working are the Lions. Shot fired just off target. Looked like it could have even been a cross there. Didn't quite catch it. The way he wanted, I believe it was a Lou on the back post there for LMU. I think it was, and, you know, I think it just didn't quite get 
the uh, the spin that he wanted on. I think he didn't have that much time to shoot and, and set up his shot. You know, he's not much of a shooter. He's more of a ball handler and someone who moves the ball downfield. But a great take nonetheless. You know, he widened out that angle a little bit, stepped back, gave himself some room, cut into the middle of the box. It was a good take. Yeah, a real bright spot for this LMU team. How about Bastian Oberly playing in a more of a central attacking, more of a creative midfielder role, and he's been great for the Lions. Brilliant switch pass there, open things up from Lou. We'll see if he'll be involved in any scoring opportunities before this one's all said and done. Virginia Tech with some more fresh legs. 75 minutes and 52 seconds have elapsed in this ball game. It is tied one apiece. 19 shots on goal for the Lions. And a hokey dose goes down hard. Six saves for the man wearing blue in the goal. Matthias Swanfeld. It's a lot of saves. He's seen a lot of shots from the Lions. 19 of them. There's Bloomer down there, but he looks like he's good to go. His play picks right back up by way of the show. And there for the Lions is Garcia holding midfield roll. He's caught out a bit here as now the Hokies have some numbers going forward, trying to stay forward. Garcia tracking back to slow things down, but Virginia Tech still very much in control. Great job there by Lou. Now the Lions going the other way. I believe it's San Roman in space. Cutting inside, looking for options. Tries to play Sauls in behind, but Keeson's all over it. Uh, it's not quite the look they were looking for. You know, a three-to-one matchup is is not really going to turn out in your favor. Of course, LMU defied those odds earlier in the game to get the, the equalizer goal, but generally speaking, that's not the shot you want, especially when you have bodies open on the other side of the field. Uh, this time it's Lou once again dancing down that sideline, brought down, but defender got the ball first. A swing and a miss there by the LMU defender. Now Virginia Tech chance going forward. Pereira tries to lay it off. He will. Virginia Tech slowing down back into Pereira. Fires a shot well over the bar. Much to the amusement of the Lion faithful. Zaniko Kwashi. It was really good setup, but Daniel Pereira airmailed that one. Looks like couple of line substitutes warming up, but no one officially at the scorer's table. Cortez. Goalkeeper Cortez, rather, settling on the goal kick. Cortez was taking his time there. Interesting tactic. You would think that LMU would want to push the envelope and continue to try to get that momentum, that competitive edge over the number 16 team in the nation. Cortez will see the ball once again. It'll quickly get it back to his squad as he's pressured right away. Olivia now in space for the Lions. He will play a big switch towards Sauls. We'll see if he can knock it down. And great job there by Sauls. Foul called against Jack Sauls. The crowd definitely not agreeing with that. If the referee let it go, it was falling perfectly to the feet of Alex Liu in the box. But Virginia Tech arguably bailed out there as it will be. Mark Hoopler coming up a bit shaken up. Looks like an ankle injury, but... Nothing too serious. It looks like he will continue on playing. Some of these injuries just miraculously heal in <laughs> soccer. It's funny. Yeah, and from Hoopler's perspective, if that injury does start to nag him, he's going to have a lot of trouble keeping up with Lou on that left-hand side. So something to keep an eye on. Now dangerous here for the Hokies as Cortez does a great job coming out and punching it away as that one almost fell perfectly to Kwashi, but Virginia Tech continues to push forward. Kwashi, good effort there on the back heel, but Lopez is all over it. Now Lou in space, charging forward, has Sauls ahead of him. Sauls making a run down the middle. Lou will play it to him. Sauls along the left-hand side, knocked out by Hoopler, and it will be a corner kick for the Lions. Just about 10 minutes left to play. Boy, that was a tough one. Cortez just about got a knee to the sternum there on that last one. He kind of put his hands up in, in protest saying, hey, you know, Raph, what was that? Now they let, a, they let a, a striker get through right to the middle, right into the box. They put a knee right in his chest. Yeah, saves almost a misleading category on how well goalkeepers are doing. 
as this one is floated right towards the back. Punched away, not convincingly though, by the goalkeeper as it's still in a dangerous area. This one will end up bouncing out wide for the Hokies. Played down the middle for the Lions. Right there is LMU. Nice header forward, but neither team really convincingly on it. This one is hit right into the press box. Nice save by the cameraman there, keeping the expensive equipment. Rayhan, that's the play of the game right there, boy. Wow. <laughs> That's a heads up play there. You had an expensive camera that one <laughs> is not yours and two is school property. Three is worth a couple thousand dollars. Well done there. This one is flipped around. Give this man a raise. Now the Lions pushing forward. Looks like it'll be a substitution coming for the Lions at the next stoppage of play. Entering the 81st minute. Nine minutes left in regulation. Good back and forth game here. This one will take a bounce and go out of bounds, referee says. Back to Virginia Tech. 81 minutes gone by. We are in the home stretch, if you will, here at Sullivan Field. The stars are officially out, although it's LA, you can't really see them. The floodlights are in full effect. Most of the fans are still sticking with us. They've got a... Uh, a cruise ship going by on Lolo Loyola <laughs> Boulevard. We got a cargo train. We got Strickler checking back in for the Hokies now. Back with their first choice striker pairing. Really trying to make this late push for a win. We talk about how a lot of the time for the Lions, these non-conference games being to figure out the roster. But if you're Virginia Tech, Really holding on to that 16th ranking is a big deal. Every game counts. Now running down the right-hand side are the Hokies. And, you know, Virginia Tech and the ACC, a very competitive conference. LMU has done a really good job of holding them just about dead even here. Big pressure there from Lou Force. An iffy ball back to the goalkeeper, Swanveld, who once again finds himself in a lot of trouble. Great job there by Sauls, forcing him to kick that out of bounds. Great play by Sauls. He did not have to hustle to get back to it. He could have just sat back and waited for the defense and the midfielders to go to work, but instead he decided to pressure Swanfield, and it worked out for him. The Lions are going to get the ball back. He forced his hand. It was a good, smart, heads-up play. And Sauls, a late substitute, definitely earning some points with manager Crumpy. Coming on initially, we thought to give Avoce a bit of a rest, but he's been a very... Prominent player for LMU in this one. Nice tackle there Beautiful from Garcia. Beautiful slide tackle. Lions fans very much appreciating the effort there. Another substitution coming in for the Hokies. Looks like exiting the game. Alex. Number 21, Cameron Lennon. Alex Liu was doing his best high jump down there, trying to get in the way of the throw in. Just shows the effort that he puts into every single play. These guys have got to be exhausted by now, but they're not showing it. It's kind of the old adage of never let them see you sweat. A beautiful slide tackle. He's going to try to play for it. There'll be Blacklock checking into the game. Blacklock, as you remember, put that shot just wide. Now overly decent chance, but big time slide tackle there to clear any danger. Lopez, once again, along with the show, done a great job stepping up and winning headers for the Lions when it counts the most. LMU now pressing forward. Big ball down the left-hand side. Potential cross coming in if he can get there. This one is kept inbounds, but unable to fully get contact on it. Lions will press in the midfield, and it will end up with them now. Dangerous area. Player brought down. No foul called. Hokies taking it the other way. Lions do have numbers, though, defensively, and so they'll kick it all the way down to Cortez, who will handle it and take his time. Of course, time is running out. Just under six minutes to go here unless this gets kicked in to overtime. A long ball down the left-hand side. The Lions might be in behind here. Played back across the middle towards the back post. Lou trying to get there but unable to do so. Good hustle there. Will win the Lions another corner kick. That'll be their fifth corner of the game. Entering the 85th minute, just about five left to play in regulation. A goal here for the Lions would make a huge difference.
Lions offense really pushing the envelope as much as they can here, even in the final minutes. 85 minutes exactly. Here comes the corner kick, Rayhan. Overly towards the penalty area. This one headed towards goal, but deflected away. Forcing a clearance from Virginia Tech. Lions really controlling momentum now, but anything's possible this late in the game. Overly looking back post here. Edge of the box. Lions trying to knock it down. It'll fall for Pereira. He'll sit on this one and check it inside to Blacklock, who gives it away back to the Lions. Just not on the same page there with Blue is Olivia, but both players acknowledging it. Now it'll be the Lions making a substitution. Put some fresh legs on, help the attack out. There's a Hokie player down currently, just at the edge of the penalty area. Clock is stopped. 85 minutes and 32 seconds. The official says there's no need for a trainer, but the Lions will head to their sideline to convene with their coach. And in seeing that, the Hokie player gets up. A definite limp. He's going to try to walk it off. Not sure if a substitution will be necessary. He's going to try to power through. And he does call for a substitution. And it appears to be Bloomler there. Key player for Virginia Tech coming out there. That's a big loss. Interesting there. In the quick injury break, basically the entire LMU team running back to get a quick drink of water, a quick word with the manager, Crumby, Virginia Tech, opting to just stay on the field. Boy, you do feel for Bloomer there. He's really has been a key player in this game, the only goal for Virginia Tech. And Bloomer really did try to Lou walk it off. but Plenty of space for Lou here. They will play this one in behind for Avoce. Flagged off sides. Lou communicating with the midfield, gets the thumbs up. Probably the better option there, but Avoce barely off sides. I think we'll see if the Lions can spring Lou one time in these last four minutes. He has been open quite a bit. It looks like the Hokies defense is a little bit shaken and frustrated. Couple players with their hands up, shaking their head, trying to figure out what went wrong there that almost Cost the Lions a good opportunity. And you can make the case that frustration building for Virginia Tech, a team coming in, top 16 team, dare I say national title hopes with a team of that caliber. Coming into an LMU team, as you touched upon before, Jonathan, 6-12 and 12 last year, and they're getting a very tough game here, far more than they probably bargained for on this L.A. trip. Baptism by fire here for some of these newer freshmen, and even for some of these returners to play a team this good and, and hang with them. Some beautiful play nice by ball. the Lions. And an even better save by Cortez, but not enough. That might actually be flagged off sides there. Lions fans very much approving of that call. But credit to Cortez, rather credit to Cortez on that play, putting his body on the line, saving the game there for LMU. We saw Kwashi come in behind there with a great scoring opportunity and no fear from the goalkeeper, Alfredo Cortez, getting in front of the ball. Good sportsmanship there from Kwashi, checking in on him, making sure he's okay. Boy, that was a hard hit, Cortez. Went down hard. We haven't seen Cortez go down quite that hard this game, although he has put himself and his body on the line multiple times, as you said, Rayhan. Part of what sets him apart, and he's not coming out. He's going to see this thing through. Yeah, and despite the goal not counting as a manager crump, you have to love seeing that out of your goalkeeper, willing to put his body on the line in a big moment. Three minutes left in the game, tied against a top 25 team. Great job there, just exactly the mentality you're looking for from your keeper. Well, Cortez is hurting, though. We saw as soon as he kicked that ball away, he's limping. He's really struggling here, but he's not going to give this one up. Three minutes to go. There's no way he's coming out of this ball game. Yeah, another substitution here. Interestingly, it'll be Lou coming out, but a very quality replacement in C.J. Neville coming in, another player bringing a similar skill set, plenty of pace down that right-hand side. So no break here for the Hokies defense, despite the substitution. This one played in towards Oberly. It'll settle with Virginia Tech. I tell you what, the Lions are going to do their best to keep that ball away from Cortez for more reasons than one. Great Ooh. pressure there by C.J. Neville. 
Neville. Nearly gone in the inside. Almost. Getting a very interesting deflection goal there, arguably, but his goalkeeper Swanveld has been on his toes in the second half. Hokies now looking for some link up play now. Strickler trying to come forward to show. Well done stepping up. Nice ball in there by Garcia. Opens things up. Oberly looking in behind. Just not enough on it. Strickler tracking all the way back to try and help build up. We see Avoche matching him. Good pressure there from Francis. Avoche so quick. He's got those long legs and he can so easily put on the afterburners and get down to the ball. You can see how quickly he collapses when the ball is contested in the middle of the field. It's a part of what makes him such a good and valuable starter. Yeah, we're seeing the benefits of him getting that rest. Saul's coming in, giving them quality minutes off the bench. Now you have a fresh Avoche to close things off. Now a dangerous ball in behind here towards Strickler. Strickler fires a shot that comes through the goalkeeper's legs and in. And that'll put Virginia Tech ahead. In the 89th minute, the Hokies break this tie, two to one. The LMU faithful calling for an offsides, but the referee keeping the flag down. The Hokies players charging into the corner, celebrating this. And a very tough spot here for LMU. Just a minute left in the game, playing very well. And this tie is now broken. Boy, that really did seem offsides. I don't know what the referee saw or didn't see there, but it looked like he was, yeah, I'm just looking at the replay now, Rayhan. It looked like he was a good three, four yards in front of the nearest defender. And unfortunately here in NCAA soccer, there will be no VAR. Would have been interesting for the referee to get a second look at that one. As you mentioned, Jonathan, looking at the video, it appears that he was offsides, but Unfortunately for the Lions, there's no video assistant referee here. And that'll put the Hokies ahead 2-1, to one, and now it's all hands on deck for LMU. One minute to go here, Rayhan. One minute. Now Kwashi likely got his eyes set on that corner flag. LMU pushing forward. Saul's coming on to link up with the Voce. Two center forwards now for LMU. Not many people... In a defensive role for the Lions, but that's probably what's best here as we have just 30 seconds left in this one. Lions trying to push things forward to Voce now getting on this ball. But he is sworn by Virginia Tech defenders and the Hokies just trying to sit on the ball for these last 20 seconds. And it'll stay with them and now things are looking very grim for LMU. Yeah, you know the Hokies are just going to be playing keep away here for the last 15 seconds. You know, boy, just when things were looking up for LMU, they were starting to rally back that injury from Cortez. Really, I think, just kind of shook that defense. You know, even on that last one, I think the defense was in the right place. They just let him slip right through the middle. Cortez was in the right place. And that's 90 minutes, and that will do it. 19 shots for the Lions, 10 shots for the Hokies, but the only stat category that matters is the final score. LMU 1, Virginia Tech 2. Yeah, and when it comes down to it, who else but... Christo Strickler who broke the tie, clutch goal by him, and the 89th minute broke our tie. And despite the final scoreline being two to one, Paul Crumpy has to be happy with the way this Lions team played. Home opener against one of the best teams in the country in Virginia Tech, and the Lions gave them all they had. LMU controlling many of the stat categories. We touched upon 15 shots to nine in favor of the Lions, seven on goal to three for the Hokies. Six saves, Matias Swanville with arguably the play of the game and which Oberly was in behind. Great kick save by Swanville. Kept Virginia Tech in this game. 13 fouls by the Hokies, 10 for the Lions. Very physical game both ways. Six corners for LMU, two for the Hokies. Lions caught off sides four times. Hokies marked as zero currently, but there was the one in which Kwashi was off sides. Great game both ways. LMU unable to convert, but Jonathan has to be a very encouraging performance for them. Oh, absolutely. I think Paul Crumpy and the rest of the LMU men's soccer team can go home, back to their dorm rooms, houses, wherever they're heading tonight, and they can celebrate a good, solid performance. Although it is a loss on the record, they can't really hang their heads too much. This is the number 16 ranked team in the nation. LMU is unranked, and after the season they had last year, I don't think anybody expected LMU to come out with this much fire and tenacity, Rayhan. Yeah, for the Lions, the next time they'll be in action coming off a good performance against Virginia Tech. We'll be on September 6th, right back here at Sullivan Field against Oral Roberts. 
And for the Hokies, they will continue their L.A. trip, travel a couple hours north to Santa Barbara. But until then, alongside Jonathan Grace, I'm Rayhan Ball, bringing you today's action.